happy Sunday. Um, hmm. I always look disheveled. There we go. I have not left the house yesterday or today, and I am okay with that. Because I've been either have company, or running errands, or getting ready for the party for, you know, the last week and a half or so. So having two days of chill was nice. Although today I did spend most of my day here at the computer doing work, but I'm caught up. I got a whole stack of stuff on the desk for dad to mail. Checks to deposit. I call, I never really called and bothered my cousin this weekend. I called him today, finally. I haven't talked to him since Tuesday of last week, or this last week. And he answered, I'm like, are you alive? And he laughs and his voice is getting very, he's losing his voice. and. Uh, he says, I am alive, he said, but it's been a lot of work. He said, I've cleaned many a toilets these last few days out here. But they survived. So that is good. So now the whole getting toilet shuffled back to the shop will begin. Uh, he's got to go to talk about the bill with the owners. And then he'll bring all the information to me and I'll put it together send it to them because they want to he wants to make sure they're both on the same page and what we're charging them and all that stuff uh, dad and I just watched the red bud motocross we recorded it yesterday no we recorded it today it was taped yesterday um, and watched it I just them guys just beat their bodies up on the motorcycles oh no we just watched the last race of each, the 250 and the 450 to see one. And to see all the people there and all that stuff. We're supposed to do a recap tomorrow night? The 5th. Maybe it's the 5th at like 11 o'clock. They, they play it on NBC Sports. So if you happen to have seen NBC Sports today where they were showing motocross, that was here. Friday I went and worked out at the pool. I met an interesting woman there. Story time. Story time. Mm -hmm. um, one of the regulars, Sally, she was coming in. She came in a little bit late and she had somebody with her. And uh, younger girl. Sally's probably in her 60s. And so the young girl got in the pool with her and we got to talking. And I said, it was her daughter in law, Carol. And I talked to her a little bit and I said, can I ask you a question? Do I hear an accent in your voice? And she says, yeah, I'm from Kenya. She's a black girl. And um, beautiful. Her hair was all pretty. She's so pretty. I wish I would have gotten a picture with her, but I was in the pool. I had no camera. But, um, and you know, I'm a question asker. So, you know, I asked her how she met Sally's son. And she came to the United States to go to college. Um, she went to college around here and when she was in college one of her classmates a male also from Kenya was they were going to a some kind of gathering with people and Sally's son was there and I said and you're like he's the one she goes yeah it ended up being that way and um, I don't know what his name is but um Sally and her husband were celebrating the 50th wedding anniversary, and they had gotten married in St. Louis, this little church that's still there. The guy who married them, who's only like five years older than them, came, and all of their kids and grandkids and everybody converged into St. Louis. Only one grandson, one grandchild couldn't make it from Las Vegas, but everybody else was there. They renewed their vows at the same church with the same preacher, and um, her son had to go back to work in Florida. But her daughter-in-law, Carol, and the two grandchildren, who were like two and three, came back to Michigan. They're staying here until about the middle of July. Because um, she is taking some time off with the kids, I guess, right now. She's a nurse. That's what she went to school for, is to be a nurse. Um, and she was telling me the story that 
because I asked, I said, has your husband ever been over to Kenya? Um, and for purpose sake, Sally is a white lady, so her son's a white boy. And uh, he, she said yes, but over three years ago, they had saved up and got tickets to go to Kenya so she could see her dad, who she hadn't seen in 10 years, and so her husband could meet her father. And she said, three hours before we got on the plane, I was packing. And I realized when I went to go grab my tampons that I shouldn't have to because I should have already had it. So she took a pregnancy test and found out she was pregnant right before getting on the plane to Kenya. So when they got there, they were able to tell her father that she was going to be having a baby. And, um, she said it was magical. And um, her mother had passed away at the age of 45 of breast cancer. So um, it's just her father and some siblings. I didn't ask her how many brothers and sisters she had. I asked her if she was the only one that decided to come to the America for school, and she said, yes, yeah, she must be the only adventurous one. And we were talking about the culture shock she had when she came here and how things are so different here than Kenya. She said, because they're, you know, kids, like when she grew up, they were allowed to have a soda on their birthday, one bottle, and they were allowed to have one bottle at Christmas. And um, she said, then I came here and everybody had just had cases and cases of soda in their refrigerator. She said, it was very odd. <laughs> and I said, so what would the one bottle of soda be that you would choose? She said her go-to was always Fanta Orange in the glass bottle. She said, but here it tastes different. She said, it's much sweeter here. Um, she said, all the sodas taste different here than Kenya. Um, she said, it's still good. But she said, it's not like the soda I grew up with. It was really fun talking to her. And uh, I, I asked if they had been able to take their children to Kenya yet. And she's like, no. But they're saving up to fly her father here, hopefully for next Christmas. Because he has never been here. And it would be an amazing trip for him. So I hope that happens. And one day she does want to take her children to Kenya to show them the other culture that they, that, that they are. <clears throat> and not just the Americanized, you know, stuff. She's like, here kids have so many things and things and things. And she said, there, you know, we had, we treasured what we had. And we had very little, but we loved it. And here it's just like stuff and stuff and stuff. She said it was a very different um, environment here. It was, it was really cool talking to her. Um, but the whole soda thing just cracked me up. That she was, they were allowed to have a soda on their birthday and a soda at Christmas. That was a big treat for them. She said it was a huge treat and they all looked forward to it. What else do I have to talk about? This week, what's happening? I have a movie date one day. DeLucci, my dad's Navy buddy, is coming into camp. This will be his fourth year in a row coming over. They show up on Thursday and they'll be here till Wednesday. So they're here for a week. Um, he called on Friday and left a message because where, where was I? I didn't have the phone or something and dad was at cards and all I hear is DeLucci go, hey, I'm coming next week. <laughs> they have a nice big fifth wheel camper. And, um, What else? We just got our garage door fixed. Couldn't talk about it after it happened because our, gra our garage and our house has not been able to lock since the party. So it's been, our house has been kind of vulnerable. But now it's all locked down. My cousin just fixed it, Bart. Um, somebody tried to lock it and didn't do it right and bent the prongs all out of shape and they jacked it up. I think I know who it was because there was a certain per I, person I asked to lock it so I don't know what they did. But man, for the life of us, we couldn't get it to work and it was, all we could do was leave it unlocked. But I just heard my cousin out there beating the crap out of it. And, um, cause our garage door, it has to be down firm to the ground. I mean, it can't be up just a tiny bit. It's gotta be firm to the ground and line up the spokes. Cause it's an old door. Turn it and they go in a little, and then you click the lock. And then, uh, but 
the spokes were all beep. But now we are secure again. Kitty, are you coming to say hello? Are you giving the box some loving? Are you giving some loving? I've been eating some great candy today. When Daryl came to my party, Daryl Workman, he brought me some great candy. Only great. It's the best. I'm gonna have me. I don't know what I'm gonna have. These ones here, wait, where are they? These ones here are really good. They're called fruities. I had one of the now and later's, but they're really brittle. They're nice when they're fresh and chewy, but these are kind of hard and brittle. And some grape blow pops. And how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll Pop? Some fruit slices. It's just a grape palooza right in my bag here. While I was doing work, I would. And for suckers, I'm a cruncher. A sucker lasts me like five seconds and I'm like <coughs> my mom used to always say you're gonna break your teeth never stop me <coughs> yeah that was me okay I suppose I'll shut up now I'm getting ready to lay down watch maybe some Netflix gotta watch my YouTubes look through the Facebook play some games my nightly ritual so I'm gonna get you uploading and I will see you all Later. Bye.